Okay, hi there. Welcome to the second in our series of videos looking at some of the demand and supply factors influencing the market for electric cars in the UK. So let's spend a few minutes thinking about the demand side of the market and some of the key changing demand factors impacting the, the overall size of the market for electric vehicles. One of the interesting things at the moment is the extent to which there are barriers uh, to people buying electric vehicles in the UK. People are oftentimes have a latent demand for something. They'd like to buy a new car, indeed perhaps a hybrid vehicle or, or, or fully battery, battery charged electric car. But you have to come overcome the barriers to buying these things. It's a major big ticket purchase. Some of these barriers are things like the cost, the vehicle cost, the upfront cost of buying the vehicle, particularly when prices are pretty high. People worried perhaps about higher electricity bills they have to charge their vehicles uh, at home. The worries about the charging time and also people don't know how to charge. There's a kind of behavioural barrier there which might have to be overcome. Naturally, there's a fear of running out of charge during car use. The economists call this zero risk bias. People would actually really like to reduce the risk to zero if they could because, of course, they, the last thing they want to do is to run out of juice on the road. There are worries about not enough battery charging stations. The network perhaps isn't sufficiently uh, um, developed and also some doubts about the size of the market for and the prices of used electric cars you see when you buy a new vehicle it does help to have a second-hand market a lively engaged market in case in case you need to sell and get a decent price for a used vehicle and indeed in the market in the UK uh, the vehicle cost seems to be the biggest barrier along with higher electricity bills and worries over charging time. There was an accelerating the evolution survey in the autumn of 2020. Uh, and people were looking, revealing that people were looking for electric cars priced at about £24,000, a charge time of half an hour, and a range of at least 280 miles from a single charge. And these were seen as tipping points. If those three could be met, then there would be a sizable increase in demand for vehicles. It's a really interesting example of the kind of process by which people make those big decisions. Now, as you know, if you've studied markets, there are many factors that can Im impact on demand. Here are some of them. Uh, firstly, house household incomes. It must be the case, surely, that uh, an electric vehicle is a big purchase. A new car is a major purchase. There must be quite a strong link between household income, real income after inflation, disposable income after tax, and demand. And that must be the case, particularly, I suppose, in the in the wake of the pandemic, which has seen disposable incomes take a fall. There's also increasingly an industrial corporate demand for vehicles. People, businesses like Uber and Amazon and, uh, and other businesses buying fleet vehicles. So they might, they might well buy hundreds of vehicles at any one time. That's worth bearing in mind. Then we think about the relative price of substitutes. So, for example, the cost of bus travel or rail travel or the cost of, of petrol and diesel cars will come into play. We also consider the relative price of complements. So the cost of charging stations, the cost of servicing new vehicles must also come into play. Complementary demand. The government can have a big impact on demand through subsidies, not just to the producers, but crucially, often governments offer a direct subsidy paid to consumers when they buy a new car. Uh, the impact of regulations. The government, the UK government, of course, is proposing to ban all new diesel and petrol cars post-2040. That date may well come, come back closer to the future. The cost of credit matters on terms, in terms of demand. So, you know, changes, variations in the interest rates paid on finance deals when you feel, if you're looking to buy a car on credit. And also, crucially, of course, the tastes and preferences of consumers may often change. People becoming more concerned about climate change and environmental factors uh, influencing decisions about when and what type of car to buy. Ordinarily, of course, we'd expect in this market that over time demand will increase. Here's a nice simple supply and demand analysis diagram. If the market supply is upward sloping, if demand for cars is increasing, shifting out to D2, for example, other things being the same, we'd expect the quantity traded of electric cars to go up, but perhaps the average price to rise. And again, this industrial demand is quite interesting. A key aspect of demand growth shown in this diagram 
uh, will be the purchases of electric cars and vans by businesses. Uber, Amazon, the Royal Mail here is trialling refitted black cab electric vans as a, as a way of, of moving to a more, towards a more sustainable model. So there we go. We've looked at some of the key demand factors. In video three, we'll tilt and pivot to look at supply in the market.